This is the Dollamore Daily, and I'm Jesse Dollamore. So once again, last night, in his continuing tour of propaganda and lies and disregard for the health of Americans all over the country, Donald Trump held a rally in Ohio. He's on a tour in a desperate attempt to maintain power, to hold on to power, touring through Rust Belt states and any other swing state where it doesn't look good for him, pretty much ignoring the rest of the country. And at this rally, like many of the rallies, it was attended by his most devoted cult members. It was a maskless freak show, like many others that we've seen. Look at some of these, these, this footage here of people shoulder to shoulder, not wearing a mask, not taking prescribed precautions to take care of their neighbor, to take care of those around them, to take care of their very in-group. These people are flocking to Donald Trump's rallies like it's a rock show. And, of course, with all of Donald Trump's rallies, they are just filled with screeds of hatred and division, and it's us against them, and fear-mongering of black people moving into the suburbs to ruin the suburbs. But Donald Trump said something egregious yesterday related to the coronavirus. On a day that we surpassed 200,000 Americans having died from the virus. Donald Trump continued his series of lies in a sociopathic method of trying to convince the people that it doesn't matter. It's not a big deal. We're almost a quarter of a million Americans dead that didn't have to die. And he's trying to convince them that virtually nobody, it affects virtually nobody. Watch this. Oh, the disease, we didn't know it. Now we know it. It affects elderly people, elderly people with heart problems and other problems. If they have other problems, that's what it really affects. That's it. You know, in some states, thousands of people, nobody young, below the age of 18, like nobody. They have a strong immune system. Who knows? You look at you. Take your head off to the young, because they have a hell of an immune system. But it affects virtually nobody. It's, a, it's an amazing thing. By the way, open your schools. Everybody open your schools. Finishing up there with the uh, open up the schools. Open up the schools. Virtually nobody is affected by this. I personally have several members of my family who have contracted coronavirus, not just one, and, and none of them elderly, by the way. So what is the motive here? Because he's only speaking to his cult, because the rest of us remember on March 19th, the tapes that we've heard from March 19th, where he said with his mouth, acknowledging the exact opposite, so we know that he knows it. Here's that tape. Now it's turning out it's not just old people, Bob, but just today and, and yesterday, some startling facts came out. It's not just old, older yeah, exactly. young people to plenty of young people. So you, what's going uh, on give in me a, a, a moment of talking to somebody, going through this with Fauci or somebody who kind of... Uh, it caused a pivot in your mind because it's clear just from what's in on the public record that you went through a pivot on this to, oh my God, the gravity is uh, almost inexplicable and unexplainable. Well, I think, Bob, really, to be honest with you... Sure, I want you to I be. wanted to... Uh, I wanted to always play it down. I still like playing it down. It's not just old people, Bob. It's plenty of young people being affected by this. What's the motive? 
of a leader of the president of the United States, other than power, because that's all I can really put my finger on, is he wants to stay president. He doesn't really care about doing the job because he's, he's, he's with, with, a, with a dead eye watching 200,000 of his countrymen and women die and continuing to not have a plan, a coherent, cohesive plan, a comprehensive plan to combat this virus. And moreover, it's not just about the people who contract the disease and are hospitalized and die. We are now learning just how much we don't know about what the, the, the long, the, the lo they call them long haulers. People who contract the disease, some of them don't even go to the hospital, who are going to have possibly long-lasting symptoms and conditions beyond when coronavirus is a problem. So it's not just dying. Some people are debilitated in their cardiovascular system. Some people are having headaches. Some people lose their sense of taste and smell forever. From NBC, the medical community as a whole has not ignored these so-called coronavirus long haulers. Healthcare providers throughout the United States have been working to figure out why they're not getting better. And a handful of post-COVID clinics have sprung up across the country for patients who are having neurological and physical difficulties months after they first got sick. And in recent weeks, to the relief of long haulers, top public health officials have recognized that COVID-19 symptoms can last for lengthy periods of time. On Friday, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention acknowledged in a report that as many as a third of individuals who are never sick enough to be hospitalized are not entirely better up to three weeks after their diagnosis. Meanwhile, Dr. Anthony Fauci, the nation's top in infectious disease doctor, has said more research is needed on individuals who appear to be suffering from a post-viral syndrome. Nearly a third of those who weren't sick enough to be hospitalized are going to be living with medium to long-term problems related to this. So who's this virtually nobody that it affects virtually nobody and send our kids to school when he knows kids are affected as well? And we know he knows it. But there he is with this cult, maskless cult, many of whom think it's a hoax because he said it. Please vote. Please get out there and vote for the sake of the, the virtual nobodies. Please do not let this loss of life and this, this carnage of a healthcare crisis, please do not let it be for nothing. Our moment has come. We are just weeks away now, and it is time. Get your neighbors, get your friends, get your family, talk to your coworkers. Start that difficult conversation, that awkward conversation. I've thought about how I'm going to do it with some of my neighbors that I really don't know, because it's important. And plus, you might, uh, you might make a friend out of it. You might see, meet someone like-minded who you never knew was as interested in politics as they are. Anyway, uh, I'd love to know what you think. 714-576-4054. Email me daily at dollamore.com. I appreciate it. I appreciate even the dissent I like to hear. It's all part of moving the conversation forward. It's all part of having that conversation. Sometimes tough conversations. The other thing is, if you are, are in a financial position where you, can, where you can help support my work here on YouTube, you can click the join button below the video there. I don't know if you're on your phone or your, or your computer. Uh, for fewer than $2 a month, you can help support independent media voices like mine. I've said it before. If I'm not your flavor 
and I'm certainly not for everybody, but if there is someone out there who brings you value, that you value more than me, that's fine. Support that person. Uh, these times are, are difficult and we can't completely rely upon corporate media because their interests are different than ours. Anyway, um, follow me on social media. I love you guys. I'll see you next time. Be genuine. Take care of one another.